was life like before you even like knew about trading or got introduced to trading? Like, what were you doing? What was the game plan? Were you like trying to do something else? You know what I mean? Like, what were you trying to do at that time? As I was doing a lot of this music stuff, it I wasn't really making any money. So I really wanted to see something coming in into my bank account. Welcome everyone to another episode of Traders Talk Podcast, where we sit down with some of the best funded, non-funded traders, man, so we can get a little glimpse into their story uh, and use that fuel, man, to light our own fire. So today I got Solo. Uh, you guys must have seen him on YouTube, man. He's been crushing it on YouTube. Lots of crazy strategies, bro, you've been dropping on YouTube. Um, and a lot of people have been benefiting, man. I had a couple people reach out to me and, and they wanted you on the podcast. So I got you today. We're going to find out, you know, how your trading journey has been um, and what kind of advice you can get, get, get for us, man. So let's just dive right into the podcast, bro. First question. I love this question because I love hearing this, like the story of where people started, like what your story was. So like solo for you, what was like, like, what was life like before you even like knew about trading or got introduced to trading? Like, what were you doing? What was the game plan? Were you like trying to do something else? You know what I mean? Like, what were you trying to do at that time? So I'm not gonna go too far back, but I'll go for, for like pretty far back enough. Um, back then I was, you know, music artist, uh, singer, and I produce as well. And, you know, I performed, did a lot of shows opening up for a lot of uh, big acts like Soldier Boy, Young Jeezy, Tyga, um, the list goes on and on right now as I was doing a lot of this music stuff it I wasn't really making any money so it kind of put me right. in a position where I really wanted to see something coming in into my bank account so I got introduced into uh network marketing that's where I first started with this whole right. entrepreneurship online thing where all right you know somebody introduced me to network marketing I got involved with the company. I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but I got involved with the company. And I think like for about a year, I was doing okay. At this time, I was still was working at a job, working a nine to five job. Um, I was actually a leasing agent, uh, do a lot of real estate, leasing apartments and condos and stuff like that. But um, I just spend a lot of time, a lot of time just trying to understand the game. You know, like that was my main thing. Like, how can I, how can I, make more money by doing little work, you know? And that was kind of my big thing. I never liked working a job. I hated working a job. That was never me. Um, <laughs> my thing was like, if I'm sitting here and working this job, I know I'm not making myself rich. I'm making the boss rich. And it's just like, he's out there living his life while I'm out here struggling, doing something that I absolutely hate. You know, I absolutely hate it. Not, not saying it's a bad thing for everybody else, but for me, it ain't for me. And you know, you know, <laughs> so it's just like, I just wanted to find ways to, to really make more income and also more ways to make more income to invest into my music career. And then, you know, music is still diehard, my number one thing to do. So yeah, I got introduced into network marketing from there. Wasn't making nothing. Um, and then I stumbled across Forex, just re really actually binary options first, scrolling through Facebook. I was uh, just seeing a bunch of people saying, oh yeah, I made $300, $500 in 10 minutes. Uh, just something through binary options. I was like, binary options, what is this? So I got involved with it. I heard about it um, through Facebook and I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna check this out. As I was checking out the videos, YouTube, Google, I was finding nice little strategies, 30 second, five minute, one minute strategies trying to implement um, and trying to really take off with this, but it never really got anywhere. So I think I was probably like three to four months in. Um, and I was just like, you know what, man, I'm not making anything. There was some days where I make some, I'm thinking like, all right, yeah, this is, this is where it's at for me. And then some days I lose some. So I'm just like, okay. So at the end of the day, I pretty much made $0, right? Pretty much lost yeah. more actually. So at this point, I was just like, all right, I, I don't want to work a job. This is not for me. This is not for me. This is not for me. If somebody can sign me or something through my music, by all means, please. That's kind of where my mindset was at, at this time. So once again, Facebook put me on a lot of stuff. Um, scrolling down through Facebook, I seen somebody post about Forex. I'm like, okay, what is this? So I got introduced in Forex. This was like five years ago now. Got introduced in Forex. Oh. And um, from there, man, Everything else is like, like where I'm at now from where I had from day one, it's just, it's just, it's just remarkable because now I'm looking back like, damn, I really came from nothing to something based off of Forex. You know what I'm saying? 
So I, I at the end of the day, man. Years. Yeah, five years. Five years. And you know what's crazy, man? I haven't really been seeing any profit until my flight like, going into my fourth year. That's how it is. That's how I, I don't know why. You know, people, uh, you were talking about how you were doing the binary thing. I don't know how I don't know how that works, but even with Forex, like uh, some people, I just posted this the other day. Like if you are three years or less in for the Forex game, don't even worry about the money. Like that shouldn't even be in it. Like you shouldn't even be thinking about money. You should be thinking about how to fix the process, how to get a better strategy, how to like, if you're three years or less, you shouldn't even really be worried about money. Cause uh, honestly, it typically takes two to three years for people to like see some kind of, I mean, I've seen some people come in and do it in like maybe two years. You like, you know, I, I think I, I did it in about two years, a few months, but man, it, at least three, four years is typically when things start like, you know, clicking and started making sense. Yeah. So right on the ball with that four, with that four month mark. Um, now my next thing I was going to ask you was during that time, how did you actually learn? Like, was it self taught on YouTube or like, did you go and try to like buy courses and like, how did that work? In the beginning, it was really a mixture of courses. I was getting like, I think I brought into two different courses and, um, it taught me the very bare minimum basic of like structure. Well, I didn't even know what a trend line was. I didn't even know what a right. higher, high, higher low was until I think my second year of trading. Um, but yeah, it taught me that now, ever since the courses, I kind of just really self-taught myself, you know, did a right. lot of Google, um, less YouTube at the time, because I felt like YouTube was really good for like just simple strategies. And I'm not yeah, that yeah. guy that just want to know something and not know the full concept behind it. So I, um, got in Google, got in Google, um, also brought a book called Elliott Wave Principle. Okay. Um, and I got introduced into Elliott Wave. And I know a lot of people maybe just watching this, maybe not know me for really Elliott wave trading, because that's usually how I look at the market. Um, but yeah, man, it's really self-taught, literally self-taught within the second year until now. Um, and, and a lot of uh, experience just really trying to adapt to understanding market movement. And by right. using that, basically my psychology is what I really learned in the long run. Like mental is number one. Everything else is last. Literally. And a lot of right, people, right. especially a lot of traders, they don't understand this. They think, well, no, I need a, I need the perfect strategy or, oh, you know, I need the perfect strategy for risk management. Mm -mm, that's not it. Because you can sit here and have, there's so many good strategies out there for one, right? There's so many yeah. good strategies. If you can get anything over 51% win ratio, I mean, obviously you're making money, but right. I always look at it like this. Like if you can sit here and, and have a rule book, a, a, a journal, like a trade map or trade plan is what I call it. Everything from my, my top pairs I trade, from my risk management, from my strategy, from my rules, your mental should be good because you're putting yourself in this position where you're disciplining yourself to where, all right, I got to follow this. If I don't follow this, I can't take the trade, you know, or something like that. So I, yeah. I, I realize in the long run, man, it's, it's definitely mental, definitely mental. I think, and I think that's something you probably realize sooner, like close to the end, because in the start, we don't care. Like, we'll just be like, no, no, no. Let me find the strategy. It's going to work. It doesn't work yeah. until your psychology gets better, but yeah. psychology comes with time, like time mistakes, getting burned out. Eventually you go, yo, if I don't stop making these mistakes, two things happen. Either people stop trading. They're like, they just leave the game or mm -hmm. they go, okay, let me follow this. Pl and that's what happened to me. I was like, let me try one more month. If this doesn't work, I'm going to quit. But let me try one month of actually following everything that I have written down. I followed it. I got funded. I got my first payout. And that, it was a wrap after that. So I think that's what that, that, that makes a big difference. So now you said, you know, it was it took you at least four years to see some profit, right? During that four years, you were obviously struggling. It must have been annoying as, you know, as annoying as shit. What kind of kept you pushing during that time? Like what made you kept going? All right, let me get it back up on a Monday. Look at the charts again and lose some more money. Great question. Uh, so my, um, I think it was my first or second year of trading. Um, I actually uh, was unemployed for a bit, uh, okay. but collecting unemployment checks. So um, I put an unemployment check of like six hundred dollars into my uh, forex account. Uh, I think this is my cool. second year. Seen this little nice little strategy at the time called the trend line strategy. Every time it hits the trend line, just buy it or sell it. Okay, okay nice. cool. <laughs> so at this time, that's what I was doing. As I was doing that, um, my account grew in a short amount of time. 
in that short amount of time, it went from 600 all the way up to 25K. Now, I remind you, I'm still fresh in trading. I don't know nothing about greed. I don't know nothing about risk management, nothing. I basically consider that as lucky charm. But that was like my, I, I think that was kind of like my um door opening to say, nah, stick with this, continue to doing this because right, it's right. going to pay off. So basically what ended up happening was, I was telling everybody like, yo, look, I just made 25K off of 600, da, 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 da. And everybody was like, take the money out, take the money out. I'm like, no, I'm going to keep going. Uh -oh, I only put 600. I so, know what <laughs> yeah. So at this time, um, I was in one trade. Uh, This trade, I remember it like it was yesterday, it was NASDAQ or not NASDAQ, it was NAS USD. And I was down a thousand. Check two days later, down 4,000. So I'm like, it's okay. Cause I, you know, my mind is $600 I put in. It's up 25k we good so yeah. count went from 25 to two uh, 20 grand 20 grand to 15 grand 15 grand to 10 grand eight grand or 10 You're grand waiting to for eight. To go back to five, right this whole time i'm just sitting here waiting on it to go up yeah <laughs> this whole time sitting there waiting on it to go up and i'm telling myself it's gonna go up it's gonna go up because it's hitting this area it's hitting this area and little do you know my account finally went down to i think like three thousand. i said you know what forget it cashed out Right then and there is when I got emotional. Right then and there is when I got emotional. And I'm going to tell you why. Because at this time, I was buying, I mean, I had so much stuff in my Amazon cart, like $3,000 hey. worth of stuff. I was going to get furniture, <laughs> new studio equipment, all types of things, new TV, oh, everything. Shit. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to cash out. I'm about to cash out. So um, went to work. Uh, this time I did actually get, end up getting another job at the time. So I went to, went right. to work. And then at this time, uh, I remember it. Uh, I was talking to a, a, a customer and then I just happened to check my phone and then immediately it's just like my whole mood changed because that's when I, that's when I basically seen that, damn, I just lost all this money. I just had, it's like you having a million dollars yeah. and somebody just snatched it from you, you know? <laughs> so, so that's how I felt. Yeah. And then from there, like I said, I got emotional and I started trying to get that money back and I ended up losing every no. single dollar. <laughs> so yeah, i already man. know how it is when it comes to to greed that's man that taught me so much but that's the reason that why I, I decided to stay huh that was a good lesson though right it was a beautiful lesson man it was because i've had those lessons before and um it really next time i was like hell no 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 i gotta follow this risk management like i still make mistakes but i don't make those type of mistakes anymore because <laughs> my first year of trading i lost 30 grand and mm. that, that was not all of my money. It was like, you know, there was some money I had to pay back to credit cards. And yeah. I was like, oh, shit. So, like, it, it, that's that happens, man. It, it, <laughs> that's when you learn the lesson of greed, right? So, and greed, <sighs> there's, there's good yeah. emotions, there's bad emotions. You can be sad and lose money. And you could be too happy and lose money, too, right? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. That just comes with that's crazy. So what, what's your like uh, daily trading routine? Like, do you have a set routine or are you just free flowing whatever, whatever time you're looking at the charts, something sets up? So um, definitely got, uh, no, I definitely do have one. So I uh, mainly try to focus during London, London and New York session only. So for me per se, um, I'm usually up and this is pretty late for me, but I'm usually up around, I would say midnight. I'm central time. So midnight all the way up to about three, 3 a.m. Okay. I'm usually around up that time just looking for a place because I scout. So I'm like in and out, in and out, in and out. Now, um, New York session, I'm usually up around, for me, 6 a.m. Central time. And then kind of going up, up, usually up to about 11 a.m. That's usually so the time I like to trade. Huh? What are you sleeping? <laughs> That's the thing, man. It's like I don't sleep. I know. <laughs> But right. I know so now, but the thing is now, usually um, if I am sleeping, I'll try to focus on a New York session mainly and just stick okay. to that. But yeah, man, my 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 um my routine is very simple. I wake up, look for, you know, have, make sure whatever the market's at, I try to create a idea, a story, my bias around that. Uh, once I create that bias, I'm, I'm pretty much just looking for my setups. Setups is very simple. Look for my setups. If I see it, if I don't, I don't trade. If I see it, I trade it. You know, and it's it's pretty simple. It's really simple, really simple. Oh, cool. And you and your uh, style of trading is like um, 
what is it just like a, are you using Elliott wave? Like what are some of the things that do you use and how can people learn from you? Like you have a, like a course mentorship, which yeah. will leave in the description below, of course, but yeah. So, I, yeah. So basically uh, I mainly focus on Elliott wave. I use Elliott wave to give me my overall story, meaning, all right, can we see market? We can see market either heading to XXX dollars or we can see market okay. consolidating around here. So I use Ellie Wave to kind of help me map out my whole entire story. Um, but I know so many rebranding terms out here now, but I'm going to just give you the classic right, traditional. Right. Uh, I also use Whack Off Theory. For those that don't right. know what Whack Off Theory, it goes yeah. into the smart money concept that a lot of people are getting involved with or into a lot of other things. Um, but yeah. I use the Whack Off Theory, Ellie Wave Theory, and I'm mainly based on just structure right structure right. structure structure is, is usually right. what i need to see in order for me to know what's going on and then price action so price um, but I, and, yeah i do have a course out go ahead no no i was just saying and then you don't use any other indicators right no so like have, if, it, you... if it if it comes to indicator only indicator i use now is probably a volume indicator which either be like a uh, accumulation distribution indicators usually what I like to stick to. Even the RSI, I only use the RSI for diversion. I hate it for over sort of overbought. Right, right, right. <laughs> I learned my right. lesson a long time ago. Uh, don't rely off indicators. That's definitely well. You can use indicators, but don't make it your main, main priority move. of entry. Right, yeah. exactly. So I always tell even my students. I tell everybody in my YouTube channel if you have an indicator, I highly suggest using an indicator, but is make sure you have your confirmations first with price market structure and then Absolutely. indicator comes last you know and that's how yeah. i am so divergence with the rsi um i just use volume indicators off of divergence that's literally it but um yeah man other than that like that's that's usually what i have going on in my youtube i talk about elliott wave i talk now i'm getting to whack off i've been kind of quiet on that one but i'm actually talking about whack off as well um always got to talk about price action and market structure but I, I do this in my courses to my uh, mentorships, students and so forth. So, yeah, I, I just make sure I give the very basic understanding of everything before somebody try to get into yeah. whatever else is out there. Because I know there's a lot of right. rebranded things and stuff, you know, so many rebranded things out there. It's just like crazy. So. So if they join your program, that's what like they can expect to kind of learn your strategy a little bit, the way you trade um, and all that stuff. We're going to link all of Soul's stuff in the link in the description below, guys, if you want to contact him or check out his website uh, links are in the description. Now, before we wrap this up, man, um, uh, wh what is one piece of advice that you could give to somebody that's just, you know, struggling or at a break even stage, you know what I mean? They've been at it for a while. You know, they must be on the second year. They're like, what, what is one piece of advice that can maybe like that you tell your students and that could benefit somebody to like push through that, that last phase. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to definitely uh, say what works best for me. So, Usually if cause we all have losing, losing weeks, sometimes maybe months, but for me per se, I always just try to remap my mental. So what I mean by that is I'll try to go back to what is it that I made a mistake on in trading? Is it a setup or is it greed or whatever it is? But I have like this roadmap, like I said earlier on, like a whole entire way that I like rules, just basically rules. I have rules from this is the pairs that I like to trade. This yeah. is my setup I look for. These are the rules, meaning that if market, does, if I cannot get three confirmations, I am not entering in the market. And then I go into what are my three confirmations or what type of three confirmations do I need? So I'm always, that, but that basically I'm suggesting and I highly suggest that you create that trading plan from A to Z, right? Create that trading plan from A to Z. And as you do that, just look at this every single second before you enter in the market. And then if you, let's say, been in the game for a long time, maybe longer than me, the best thing I can also say is back test. Even though back test doesn't give you the mental, but I'm sure you might have that might have worked out. But back testing is key. I, I've been talking to so many students of mine and little do you know, none of them really back test. Even when they right. get a new strategy strategy, and they see, oh, I just seen this on YouTube, that is my back test. I'm like, no, you have to personally back test. You know, so I highly suggest just, on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, I always back test. I always back test. And, wow. and it just gives me my confidence back. You know, it gives me my confidence back for the week. And I say, all right, guys, this is what we're going to do for this week. What a, what a, what a. But yeah, man, back test is key. Back test. I say back test and having a trading plan are what I consider being very, just, just staying consistent, you know, just right. being consistent.
you know, so. That ties in with what we were talking about in the start about psychology and how people keep making this, like, you know, you make the same stupid mistakes until you have a breaking point. And then it's mm-hmm. either you're going to stay, follow the plan or you better leave before this shit kills you. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, two options. like what else are you going to do? You'll eventually burn yourself out from like stress or financial issues. But uh, I think the last thing I want to ask you is, do you feel over the course of your trading career that you've changed as a person? Because I feel like some things within me have changed. Like I had to change myself. Mm. I don't know why, but there were some things that had to change within me. Do you yeah. feel like that, that happened with you? Absolutely. And you know, it's number one thing is patience with me. Yeah. And precise. Just being real precise and really observating before I actually take action. Like that's that I think trading is what taught me that. You know, being precise is just being consistent for one, but patience for for sure. And just observating before I actually like speak on it or act on it. Right, right, right. Awesome. But you're man. right though, man. That's facts. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I always bring that up because I feel like it changes me. But man, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. All of uh, Solo's uh, links will be in the description below, guys. Um, Check out his stuff and follow him on Instagram as well. Thank you for coming on today, bro. I appreciate it.